One, two, three, four. Hi guys, this is a common fresh out of my workshop and I have been trying to play it since I made it. It's very easy to make and it can make your jamming sessions a lot more lively. I am Josh and this is my DIY channel, Video Epo. You're welcome. We are in my room come workshop where we are going to make a cajon and for those who do not know what a cajon is, cajon is a Peruvian percussion instrument. That is, it's got its origin from Peru. And talking about Peru, if you look at Peru's map, it resembles the shape of the local animal alpaca. Do you think so? Leave your responses in the comments below. Cajon is usually used in Afro-Peruvian music and it's a favorite with street musicians. Nowadays, you will find this instrument being used in a lot of concerts as well. It's spelled as C-A-J-O-N but pronounced as cajon. It's a Spanish word which means box or a drawer. That is what it is and we are about to make one. Most cajons have a guitar string or a snare spring inside its body to give that special sound. I'm going to use a snare spring. I've seen cajon making videos in which a regular snare spring is cut into two halves and one half is used. You could do that but I got this online which is specifically made for cajon. Links can be found in the description. Getting started, I have 18 inch by 12 inch plywood and I have three of those. These will form the sides of the cajon. Now there are two pieces of 12 inch by 12 inch and this will form the top and the bottom. Note that all of these pieces are of 12 mm thickness. The front is also 18 inch by 12 inch but the thickness is only 6 mm. Now this is the striking surface and it is called the tapa. Except for the front piece, all the other pieces will be glued together permanently and the front piece will be attached with screws. This is done so that the tone of the tap or the beat could be adjusted later if required. The process is very straightforward until this point. I got these pieces pre-cut from the shop and it's a good idea to share your plans with the sellers as they might give you the pieces that are left over from their project for a lesser price. You might get a good deal. One snag, however, is I want a mitre joint on these pieces which I've never done before. I could fix them as it is, but then I'm trying to push myself for the extra effort and learning curve. The way I'm planning to do that is by tilting my jigsaw to a 45 degree angle and making my cuts. Let me do that with some taste pieces first. Production is a must. After a bit of practice, the results seem to be satisfying. Our plywood is 12mm thick and so we mark a line at 12mm from the factory edge and make our cut. The two side pieces were lined up the way they would be in the final build. Then the approximate length of the snare wire is measured from the top and a hole was marked for the dowel to be inserted. Measuring the size of the dowel, holes were made on the plywood. One has a full hole that is all the way through and the other one half the way through. You will know why as we move along. The length of the dowel is about 14 inches and the extra length is for rotating and adjusting the snare spring. The dowel goes through the hole and rests on the side with a partial hole. The initial plan was to put a bolt on the ends here, but the fit is so snug that it works without those. Now the pieces are ready to be glued making sure they are squared. These are makeshift corner clamps made with a piece of angle iron and C clamps to hold the pieces together in 90 degree angle. After making the fine adjustments, the setup was let to dry. I ran into trouble with the mitre cuts I made with the jigsaw. It's not advisable if you do not have a proper blade guiding system. Simply go with the straight cuts and put the box together. I didn't want to abandon the project at this stage, so I went through the complete cycle. Now it's time to drill the hole on the back piece. The reels I used to reinforce the pieces are a bit of a problem here. Let's see if my new adjustable drill bit holds good. Time to test. The reed is still not cut and the jigsaw was used to clear it up. Four holes from an inch of the respective corners were made for the rubber feet. They were then attached with bolts which held them firmly. It's time we decided how we want our snare wires to be positioned. I'm going to the right side and fasten it with the screws. The tapa is not glued but attached with screws only. We need a jig to make holes for the tapa to be fit in. The interval between the screws needs to be consistent for the cajon to be tuned later. Using a reaper of the same thickness, pilot holes can be marked. Using a drill press to make holes results in perpendicular holes on this thin reaper. And attaching it to a squared scrap wood completes our jig. This jig can now be placed and slided along the edges and the holes can be made with a drill at equal intervals. To give this project a better completion, veneer were glued and a bit of paint touch-up get to a whole new level. Let me just wrap up with the mistakes I made and what I learned in this process. Mitre cuts with a jigsaw and without a proper blade guiding mechanism is a big no-no. Proper wood filling and making sure the surface is even is a must. A single snare spring is not sufficient and this depends on individual taste. I should have made this with 18mm plywood instead of 12mm plywood. I should have left some option open for the guitar string type setup as well.
Alright guys, now the whole project has turned out to be okay. Look wise is decent and it does its job really well. Now from this experience, I can make better cajones and I'm already on it. I'm going to make some professional do the testing for us and that is going to be a future video. I hope you like this one and if you really do, please share it with your friends. Come on guys, support me. Subscribe to my channel video epo. As always, thanks for watching. I'll be back with another video next week. Until then, bye.